And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Time to praise him, it's time to lift him up, it's time to shout for joy. He is risen, he is risen. The Lord has risen. I don't know about you, but I am excited because Jesus rose just for me and I give him praise, glory, and honor. He is worthy. Jesus. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I don't want to get too excited because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I thank God for you. I thank God for being here this morning. Thank God for each and every one of you that came out to the house of worship. I also thank God for those of you that are watching by TV, those of you that are on YouTube, praise the Lord, and Facebook. I hope that everyone, praise the Lord, is watching this Pentecostal Revival Hour because we are just having a good time praising the name of the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Well, why, praise the Lord, why the pandemic was much heavier than it is now. We stop using our pom-poms and our signs. But praise the Lord, we said we'll get them out today. So if you see me shaking my pom-pom or you see me with my sign, I want you to know it's to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor because he is worthy to be praised. We're not going to be long the time. Praise the Lord. We're going to get ready. And praise God, our devotional leader is coming, Sister Phelps, and as she come, let's give God a hand of praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for being here on today. And those of you who can stand, I'm going to ask you to stand or just where you are in your seat. We are going to repeat the Lord's Prayer together in concert. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come on and put your hands together one more time. Oh, you're not clapping for me. You're clapping for Jesus. Hallelujah. It is Resurrection Sunday. And somebody, there's a debate going on in terms of when he, what day of the week he was risen. But I heard somebody say, I don't care what day it was. All I know is that he rose. He rose and he rose with all power in his hand and not only did he have all power but he gave us a little bit of that same power hallelujah come on and put your hands together hallelujah we thank god we thank god for easter sunday we thank god for those of us who have graduated from being ceos and now that we're we're all seasoned saints amen 
We live out the story of Jesus in our everyday life, in our everyday walk, because we understand the sacrifice that he made. So we don't just celebrate him on today. We celebrate him always honoring the sacrifice that he has made for us. Amen. A lot of people, again, talk about the story of Easter as if it's just a story. But we're here today to let you know that it's more than just a story. We believe in the resurrection of Christ. We believe that he rose with power, and we believe that he gave us his spirit to dwell on the inside of us on today. I believe it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands together. You can wave your hands in the air. You can swing from side to side, but we're going to give all the glory to the Lord. It's not just a story. It's a living, breathing, walking testimony of a God so good he leave this home in glory. Mm -hmm. For the world he loved, for the world that he so loved. It's not just a story, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe in the conquered death. I believe in his resurrection. I believe he's coming back again. I believe that his fear is with us. I believe that he gives us power. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe it. I can't deny it. Mm. If I said I got here on my own, I'd be lying. Cause my eyes have seen the goodness of the Father. Mm. We're the ones he loved, we're the ones that he so loves. Yes, oh, I can't deny it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in the life of Jesus. I Conquered death. I believe in the resurrection. I believe he's coming back again. I believe that his fear is with us. I believe that he gives us power. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe it. of Jesus. I believe that he conquered death. I believe in the resurrection. I believe, I believe, yeah. His spirit's with us. I believe he gives us power. He is the son of God. Oh, I believe. Life of Jesus, I believe, I believe, I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe in your love, in your power, in your spirit. I believe you rose with all power in your hand. Hallelujah! Come on and put your hands together. We know that the sacrifice had to be blameless. It had to be spotless. In and everybody couldn't be the sacrifice for the entire world. But we know that Jesus was holy and that there was none above him. There's none so holy. There's 
there's none so worthy and there's no one more faithful than our Jesus. So we're going to welcome Sister Zuri Phelps to the stage on today. And she's going to help us go a little bit higher in worship, magnifying the holiness of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So faithful, there 
there is no one, no one. I can search the heavens high. I can search the earth below, but there is no one. There is no one, no one. Give honor to all the pastors, missionaries, deacons, saints, friends, visitors, each and every one of you in your respective places. And at this time, we're going to start our 20, 23 resurrection program. So I would like for you all to dance, scream, shout, whatever the Lord lead you to do, whether it be praise, song, or whatever. You all are welcome, welcome, welcome. And at this time, we're going to start our program with our junior class. And at this time, we're going to start with Brother Samuel Williams. His love. God sent his son to take the punishment for all the thoughtfulest, sinful things we do. God gave his life because he loved us. His love is boundless, sweet, and forever true. On Easter morning, he showed he is our Savior. His resurrection proved he is our Lord. That's why we tell you, Happy Easter, he secured our heavenly reward. And at this time, we're going to have Brother Christian. Impossible. It is impossible to find any other who could suffer, die, be resurrected, and give eternal gift to humankind. That's Jesus. That's Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Praise and at Lord. this time, we're going to uh, hear from our uh, primary uh, class, and it will be Sister Rain and Brother Carson. Amen. Jesus is a love. Amen. Thank you. And at this time, we'll get to hear from Sister Adriana Talton. Today I'll be reading from St. Luke 24, 6 and 7. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Thank God for the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from the family. We're going to hear from Sister Chloe, Brother Alexander, and Sister Zuri. <laughs> this is our ode to Jesus. He came from, from his home of glory. He lived amongst mankind. He loved us all so dearly. He let his brilliant light shine. He was tried by unjust men. He was convicted of crimes he didn't commit. He was persecuted unjustly so. He was crucified for our sins. He was buried. But it was just the beginning. Because, because he rose on that third day. He appeared unto his disciples. He let them know I am the truth and the way. He conquered death. He stole victory from the grave. He rose with all power in his hands. He ascended back into his father in glory. But, but he's he soon to come, come again. again. He did it for me. He did it for you. He did it so we all might live. We thank him today for, for the victory. victory. So our, our lives to him we do give. give. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to continue with Sister Chanel Winfrey with the testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Y'all are beautiful. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. First of all, I want to thank God for who he is. Yes. I want to thank God for today. I'm celebrating my 47th birthday. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Now, if you had asked me four years ago, I want to believe that I would be celebrating my 47th birthday. Yes. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer. Yes. I had started my retirement physical from the military. Yes. Many, many years. It started back, I'll say, 2013. I was going to the doctor and I was telling them something is wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. 
I had stopped doing the things that I love. I only wanted to go home and go to sleep because I didn't have the energy. Amen. 2017, the Spirit told me that it was time. It was time for me to retire. I enjoyed what I was doing, but I had got to the point where I, I didn't have the energy to go, go anymore. Come to find out, the reason was because I had cancer. It shook my world, it really did. And at first I wanted to do it alone. I didn't want to tell my family because I didn't want them to worry about me. Because at the time I felt that I'm supposed to bury my parents. My parents are not supposed to bury me. So April of 2018, I had surgery, five hour surgery. It cut me across my mid area and I was in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. Surgery was very successful. Before surgery, I asked every doctor, every nurse that I was dealing with, did you get some rest and are you feeling okay? Because my life is in your hands. My mom kept asking me, why are you asking them that? I said, Mama, I don't want them going in surgery thinking about the wrong thing and mess around and cut the wrong thing. Yes. <laughs> so everybody that I love, my family, was there with me to support me. And I seen the eye. My son, he was in tears. He was terrified. And before I went under, I asked, Lord, Lord, take care of him. Take care of me. Whenever you hear cancer, you think of the wrong, the worst case scenario. Amen. But I'm here to tell you guys. Yes. 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 The Lord told me that yes. every man is appointed once to die. Yes. yes. And after that script scripture came back to me, I ain't looked yes. back. Oh. I've been on, I've been on a go. Yes. I survived that surgery. I lived to see my son graduate. Yes. I buried one of my parents. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And there's more to come. Amen. It's more to come. Amen. I ran across a nurse that told me, do you believe that you can be healed from within? Yes. Thank you, Lord. And the Spirit told me, that's your faith. Amen. Faith is the power of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you don't have faith, I'm telling you, just get a little, little bit of faith Amen. and trust in the Lord Amen. that whatever that you're Amen. going through, he will see you out. I guarantee you. Step out on faith, God will see you. I battled depression. I better, I went through the scars. I looked at my family. family. <laughs> they were crying for me because they thought that it was over. But I'm here to stand in front of you guys. It's not over. I live with cancer in me every day. I walk with cancer in me. I see my family, my friends, they celebrate that they've overcame cancer. They're survivors. But I don't get to tell that story. My story is different. And the way my story is different because I get up every morning, I give God the thanks that he enabled me to walk with cancer, to tell my story, to let everybody know that cancer doesn't rule me. I have rule and power over cancer because God gave me that power. And if you ever have a family member that tell you that they have cancer, you embrace it. You let them go through all the emotions that they're going to go through, because they're going to go through it. But every time you see them, give them words of encouragement. Yes. You have power. Yes. You are strong. Yes. God don't give you the power of fear. Amen. Tell them, just feed their soul, because they're going to need it. Amen. Like I said, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to bow down to cancer. You can just, I tell everybody I got an unwanted roommate. My roommate acts up sometimes, but I let my roommate know, yes. not today. Yes. I may go to sleep. I get tired sometimes, yes. but I get up the next day, and I was like, Lord, what do you have me to do? I'm here for you, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. When you see me, you see a woman with power yes. over all things, yes. even cancer. So I encourage you all to utilize your faith. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough sometimes. But like I said, God gives you the power to overcome anything, anything. You got to first believe it in your heart and activate it. 
Lord, y'all continue to pray for me. Praise the Lord. And we're going to continue on. And next, we're going to have Missionary Walton with a testimony. I'm just so excited this morning, and I just want to give God the glory and the honor for all he has done in my life. And I'm just so excited because today it's all about Jesus oh, and yes. what he did for Carolyn Walton. Oh, and I just yes, want Lord. to let y'all know I had always been saved. And I just thank it for the blood. Yes. I thank Jesus for the blood that yes. he shed it on that cross. Yes. And I take it personal just yes. for me. Yes. Because he died, I live. Yes. Because when I first came here, I didn't think I was worthy to be yes. saved. I didn't think Jesus loved it, me because I was messed up from the flow up. Oh, yes. I was selling drugs. I was doing all kind of sinful things. And you know, I heard the word of God from the man of God, Apostle Abba Fence. Amen. And when I came into that church, I came to church with somebody. They pretended like they know Jesus, but they didn't know Jesus. And so I kept coming, and he told me, I never forget, y'all. I never forget. He said, you can be somebody's daughter. He said, Jesus love you. You don't have to live in sin. And you know what? I really thought he was crazy. Because I was like, now how he expect anybody to live in this world without living in sin? And so, you know, I kept coming. Cause like I say, I had all kind of habits. And I had all kind of things going on in my life. Man. And I didn't know Jesus. But every time I came to the church, yeah. and me and my friend, we did dope and stuff on the way to church. And we did all kind of uh, sinful things. But I want you to know, the man of God, he never stopped saying, you can be somebody. Man. He never stopped saying, Jesus love you. You don't have to live in sin like this. Amen. And every time, y'all, I got ready to stop. I said, this man is crazy. I said, ain't no way you can do this. And I kept coming. He kept saying the same thing. Every time I got ready to stop Amen. coming to church, Praise he said, daughter, Jesus love you. Hang on in there, daughter. Amen. Jesus love you. You can be somebody. Amen. But you know what? My friend that I thought she was, right. she dropped off. Right. But I kept coming. My family, they didn't understand why I was coming to this church. These folks trying to brainwash you. But you know what? I kept coming. Yeah. I still was selling drugs. Yeah. I was using drugs. Yeah. I was sexually. I loved it to have sex. And I had all kinds of sex problems. I'm not ashamed of my testimony. Right. Because right. you know what? Right. His name right. is Jesus. Yeah. He did that for me. Because see, I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I could be saved. But I kept coming. I kept coming. I kept listening to the man of God. And you know what, saints? He told me that you need the Holy Ghost power. Because see... I didn't have no power. I thought I had some power, y'all. I didn't have no power. Every time I say, well, I'm not going to lay up with James no more. Because, you know, I was sold out to the devil. But I did it anyway. And the man of God, he said, you need the Holy Ghost. And I never forget. He said, Jesus love you. And I remember that night when Jesus saved me. He saved me. And you know what? When my dope buddies and my girlfriends... And my sex partner, when they called me, I had some power, y'all. Oh, yes. I didn't have power when I started. But I want you to know, God is able. Yes. And you know, with all that power, when Jesus got up, he had some power. And you know what? I thank him for giving me that power, that Holy Ghost power, the power when the devil come into your life. He said, you can't live in this world without living in sin. But I can say the devil is a lot. And I don't care what nobody tell you. You can live in this world without living in sin. You don't have to go to hell. And I just thank him because God is so good. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. Whatever I ask God for, after I changed my lifestyle, I had to make some changes in my life. It didn't come overnight. It took time. I had to keep coming. I had to keep applying this thing to my life. And I just want y'all to know I thank him. I thank him for the blood. I thank him for the power. And he gave it to us. And each yes. and every one of us, we can have that power today. Yes. Yes. We don't have to wait. Oh, Jesus is yes. a loving God. Yes, but you know what? Is. You just can't play church. 
can't get a switch that Jesus loves you, but he gave us a choice. It's up to each and every one of us what choice we want to make. But I want you to know from Carol and Walter that Jesus is a saint. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus is a healer. No matter what come, no matter what go, because things going to happen in our life. Don't think it's going to be easy, but I want you to know that Jesus died for us. He died that we can live. Yes. It's our opportunity. So I'm here today to celebrate. Yes. I celebrate Jesus. Not for y'all. It's for me. I'm taking this thing personal. Yes. Because yes. Jesus did it for me. And I love y'all. But I want you to know. If you get connected to Jesus. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Men will let you down. Girls will let you down. Your job will let you down. Things will let you down. But my God. Jesus. I want you to know that he's yeah. there. He's there when you can't get up. He's right there. So I just want to encourage each and every one of you to try Jesus if you don't know him. And if you do know him, celebrate him. Because he's worth of the praise. He's worth of the glory. He's an awesome God. And can't nobody do you like Jesus. And I love y'all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And at this time... You'll be hearing from none other than myself, Sister Jennifer Walton, with Jesus came back. Jesus came back like he said he would. He said he would return, and there he stood. With eyes open wide, they looked in dismay. For only three days, Jesus had gone away. Jesus appeared as if out of the blue, telling them all, I promise I'll come back for you. Jesus came back once. He'll return once more, just like he assured he would before. Jesus came back. The cross in my pocket. I carry a cross in my pocket. A simple reminder to me of the fact that I'm a Christian no matter where I may be. This cross is not magic, nor is it a good luck charm. It is meant to protect me from every physical harm. It's not for identification for all the world to see. It's simply an understanding between my Savior and me. When I put my hand in my pocket to bring out a coin or a key, the cross is there to remind me of the price he paid for me. It's also a daily reminder of the peace and comfort I share with those who know my master and give themselves to his care. When I, it's also a daily reminder of the peace and comfort I share with those who know my master and give themselves to his care. So I carry a cross in my pocket, reminding no one but me that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, if only I let him be. <laughs> I do want to commend everyone who had something to say today on this occasion especially our young people many young people have a bad reputation especially among us concerning Christ they say that they're not saved they say that they don't believe in Jesus they don't manifest him in their lives. But I thank God for our young people this morning. Come on, let's give them another hand of praise. I want to commend all. Everyone did an awesome job in their presentation not to me not to you but unto the Lord 
for accepting what Jesus did personally in their lives. That's something that we all must do. We have to believe, as the song said, that Sister Phelps song first. I believe it. And if you believe it, you act upon what you believe. You all are making it very difficult for me concerning the telecast this upcoming week. <laughs> because we won't have time to put the whole, everyone on there. So I, but if you want to see everyone, go to our live stream, go to Facebook, go to YouTube, and the whole presentation will be there. So I'm not going to hold you all long. Because all of these people that came forth this morning, they have already ministered. And I want to thank them for the job that they have done. I do want to ask everyone to stand before I go forth. Everyone to get your Bibles and repeat after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazella Pentecostal Church to be taught the word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins and the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. I have power over the devil. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen once again. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Also, if you will, bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. We thank you especially on this occasion, this Resurrection Day celebration. We have come before you in your house thanking you for your son Jesus coming and dying in our place. We have accepted the gift of your son in our lives. And Lord, as we go forth, we want to let everyone know that Jesus still saves he still heals, and he still delivers. We pray for the lost, that they see the need of you in their lives. We pray for those who are saved, that their salvation is maintained in you. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen. You may be seated again. We thank everyone for being out today. And if you have your Bibles... Open them up to St. John. St. John is basically the same thing that we discussed this morning in Sunday school. St. John chapter 20. St. John chapter 20. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 1. And if you have it, say, I have it. I have it. All right, wonderful. And it reads, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. So we're going to pause right there briefly, and we see that the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, she's coming early. Now this Mary is the Mary that Jesus cast Seven devils out of it. 
she also has a negative reputation among many people because of who they thought that she was. Many people call her a harlot. There was nowhere in the word where it says that she was a harlot. But it does say that she was demon possessed. But anyway, she loved Jesus. And she had a feeling about coming and anointing his body. That was their reasoning for these women to come. So here she is coming early, before the sun came up. You know, a lot of times people say Jesus rose at sunrise. But the word here, we can see that he rose before sunrise. It was still dark. When she approached the sepulcher, and when she arrived there, she noticed that the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away by the angel of the Lord. And so this was so amazing because there was a prophecy that Jesus was going to be risen. But there was something that the people that did not like Jesus wanted to do to make sure that this didn't happen. So what they did was put a huge stone over the door of the sepulcher because it had been said that the disciples would come and steal the body. But we see that this stone was rolled away. And the purpose for the stone being rolled away was not so that Jesus could get out. But for others to come and see that he was not there. Jesus had the power to go through the stone. He didn't need the stone to be rolled away. But anyway, as Mary arrives at the sepulcher, she notices that the stone was taken away. So she runs and comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. We know that was John. And saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we, do, and we know not where they have laid him. This is what she was thinking. That someone has come and taken Jesus away. Verse 3, Peter therefore, Peter went there, Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So we see that John arrived first. He didn't immediately go in, but he looked in there, and he noticed the linen clothes. There was no body. Six verse eight. Then come a sign of Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. So Simon Peter, he goes in, and he notices the linen clothes. He also notices the napkin. The napkin wasn't in the place 
where it was when they wrapped Jesus' head. All right. But he saw it wrapped in another place by itself. Yeah. See, Jesus was so organized. <laughs> he didn't just get up and just go out. But he left it neat. So when the people came in, things were in order. Verse 8 says, Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. This is the point that we have to get to. To where we believe. John, it had been prophesied not just to John, but to all the disciples. It had been spoken to by Jesus that these things were going to happen. And just like many of us today, we hear things, people tell us things, especially our elders, people who have more experience in life, and oftentimes they tell it to us and at that moment, we don't really hear it. Sometimes we say, oh, I hear what you're saying. But we don't really believe it. But later on in life, I know there have been many, been many things that my father told me in conversation. And I said, oh, okay. All right. But as time has gone past, and especially when the father is gone, <laughs> many of the words that they have spoken to us, we fully understand. We fully believe. This is how John was. Whenever he saw that Jesus was not there, and another reason why he, he was so ready to believe was because he followed and saw the whole thing. Right. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. From the time that Jesus was arrested, right. John was there. Right. When they took him before the chief priest after his arrest, yeah. John was there. When they tried Jesus, the high priest tried him. John was there. When they took him before Pilate, John was there. When they beat him, stripped him down, John was there. When they nailed him to the cross, John was there. Now, the rest of the disciples, Peter followed along. He couldn't get in. He didn't have access. But John did get him in. All the other disciples, when Jesus was arrested, just like many of us, we would do the same thing. We see Jesus with all the power being manifested throughout his ministry. And now he seems powerless. Whenever Jesus was arrested, they ran and hid. They were in fear for their lives. Many of us would have done the same thing. But John, he followed. This is the reason that Jesus told John because Jesus' mother was there the whole time. And at the crucifixion, that's when he commissioned John, this is Jesus, commissioned him to take care of Jesus' mother, his mother. Accept him, accept her as your mother. And he told his mother to accept John as her son. Jesus did not want to leave 
his mother without support. He also didn't want to leave John without support. They were told to help one another. Oh, Jesus had other brothers and sisters. But he told John to make sure that his mother was okay. So this is the reason why John had this special relationship. He even, in his writing, quite often he would say, the disciple that Jesus loved, referring to himself. He never would put in his writing, he never did put his name. But he felt that he was the one that Jesus loved. Also, Peter, James, and John, they were at the transfiguration. John experienced some things that Mark, Matthew, and Luke did not see. So now he's able to put it in words. And and right here, whenever he again says that he saw that the body was not there, but the linen was there. I'm quite sure the linen was sold. I'm quite sure it had blood on it. But he said, now I believe. Now I know. As the song say, it's not just a story. But I believe it. So, again, we see that John believes. Verse 9 says, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So again, it's a difference between hearing and knowing. You can hear something, but just because you hear it doesn't mean you know it. Some people can hear the same thing. Some of you have children. You can attest to this. You can hear all your children there. And tell them all the same exact thing at the same time. But all of them do not know what you have said. How do you know that they know? Or how do they know what you have said whenever they put in action what you have told them? You can tell all your children to go and do something. Tell them all the same thing at the same time. And one of your children or two of your children or maybe all your children, maybe none of them do what you told them to do. But they knew it because you told them. So in like manner, whenever Jesus, it had been prophesied that Jesus would come and that he was going to be crucified. But they didn't really believe it. But now they are going to believe it. Anyway, let's go on down. Let's go on down. It says in verse 10, then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the foot, at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, She turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou whom whom seekest ye thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, 
saith unto him, Sir, if thou had borne him, hence tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. So again, Mary's We hope you have enjoyed our program today. We want to invite you to view all of our telecasts. We're on Christian Television Network on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We're also on station WGNM, Cox Cable Channel 7, on Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. On our programs, we have closed caption available. Our services can also be seen on the Liza Pentecostal Church Facebook and on YouTube. Come and be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, Lizella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin with Sunday school at 9 a.m., followed by morning worship at 11 a.m. We have Bible studies on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Join us for Sunday school and Bible study on Zoom. Our meeting ID number is 296-151-7611. And our passcode is 399-261. So again, thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you again in Jesus' name. Yes, oh, I can't deny it. Jesus, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. Cry holy, holy, let the earth rejoice. He is worthy of all praise. Yes, we cry holy, holy, let the earth rejoice. of Jesus. I believe that he conquered death. I believe in the resurrection. I believe, I believe, yeah. His spirit's with us. I believe he gives us power. He is the son of God. Oh, I believe. Life of Jesus, I believe, I believe, I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe in your love, in your power, in your spirit. I believe you rose with.